Do you all have that one person in your life that changed your quilting? I do. That person, Eleanor Burns. That thing, Flying Geese. And I'll tell you more about that later, but for now, I'm Kimberly with Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm gonna show you five ways to make flying geese. So like you know, there's not one way to do anything when you quilt. So today I'm gonna show you five different ways to make flying geese. You can try all five and see which one you like the best. And at the end, I'll tell you the way that I like best also. Now today, we've done all the math for you and in the description box, we have cheat sheets. So you can print that and have that as a resource in your sewing studio anytime you wanna make flying geese. And today, to be consistent, I'm gonna show you five ways to make two inch by four inch finished flying geese, but on your cheat sheet, you'll see all the sizes you need. So make sure to subscribe and let's get started. So our first method is the traditional flying geese. We're gonna make two inch by four inch finished. So we're gonna cut a two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle, and we're gonna cut two squares that are two and a half inches square. And you can find this in the description box. Here's your unfinished size and your finished size. So when you're looking at a pattern, you will see unfinished size and your finished size is after it's sewn into the unit. So for traditional flying geese, this is what you're gonna see in most quilt patterns. This is the most straightforward method and the one that is used the most. So the first thing you're gonna do is draw on the wrong side of your two squares a line from corner to corner. The more accurate the line is and the more accurate you sew on the line will give you better results. So my first tip for you is you're gonna make one side of the geese. We'll start with the left side. And my biggest tip is you can just sew on that line, but you're gonna have much better results if you pin three times. And you will see how accurate I can get this by doing that. Now I'm gonna sew with an open toe foot and I'm gonna stitch directly on that line. Not a little bit to the left, not a little bit to the right, just right on that line. So I left my pins in when I was sewing so nothing would shift. From here, I'm gonna put a ruler with a quarter inch line on the drawn line and I'm gonna cut. Now this is gonna be your waist and we'll talk about waist later. So I'm gonna set my seam first, press toward my square. And you'll notice I didn't rock my iron back and forth. This is gonna give you the most accurate results. And now we're gonna add the second square and I'm gonna do that same thing pin three times and stitch on the line. Trim a quarter inch away. Set your seam. Press to one side. And here is your traditional method making flying geese. From all the methods I show you, this is gonna be the least accurate, meaning it's not gonna come out exactly, exactly two and a half by four and a half. It is gonna be your slowest method because you sew one at a time, and it is going to have waste because these are leftover fabrics that are not used in your unit. Now let's move to method two. Our second method is the fast flying geese method. This is the way my friend Lori Holt likes to make her flying geese and how she writes them in her pattern instructions. For the finish, for the two by four inch finished, you're gonna cut a five and a quarter inch square and four two and seven eighth inch squares. And you find all of this math on our free cheat sheet. You're gonna take your background squares and draw a line from corner to corner on all four. Same thing, the more accurate the line, the better. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take your big square and you're gonna take your two squares and put them on opposing corners. 
and I'm going to pin twice on each square to keep it nice and in place. And from here, we're going to actually be stitching a quarter inch away from that center line. So I'm going to draw a second line. You don't have to draw that second line, but I prefer to draw the line. So we're going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch on both outer lines, leaving our pins in place, and we'll be right back. Remove your pins, cut on the center line, and you're going to have two units that look like this. Set your seams, press toward the background, Now you're going to take these two squares and draw the lines a quarter inch away from the center. You're going to place the square this direction on both and you're gonna pin twice. Now you it's gonna look kind of funny. You're gonna see little dog ears here and just don't worry about those yet. And I promise you, if you start pinning when you make your flying geese, it will give you more accurate results. Now here, you're gonna do that same thing. You're gonna stitch on both outer lines. And I know it looks really funny, but in a second, you're gonna have four flying geese. Now you're going to cut on the center line and you're going to have four units that look like this. You'll set your seam and press toward the background. Now from here, what you'll do is you'll cut these little dog ears off. Now this is called the fast flying geese method because you make four at one time. You have absolutely no waste on this method. It is way faster than normal. And I would say its accuracy is about as accurate as the first method. So now that we've done fast flying geese, let's move to method three. Our third method is the newest method, and it uses the new quilt block foundation paper by It's So Emma. And if you need to know what size to buy, you can either look at the bottom of the pad, or we have a cheat sheet for which paper to use. Today we're using two inch by four inch finished. You will open the paper pad and look on the back, and that will tell you placement one is a five by five and three quarter inch rectangle and placements two and three are two three and a half inch squares. Always look at the inside of the paper pad for what sizes to cut. And so the first thing you're gonna do is take your background squares and cut on the diagonal. And then what I like to do on this paper is use the add a quarter ruler and mark the creases between one and two and the creases between one and three. And what that allows you to do is see placement on the wrong side. So what you'll do is this is your fabric one and this rectangle needs to cover that. To make this easy, I'm gonna cut on the dotted lines just to get that paper out of the way. And now your paper will be the size you need to place this rectangle on the back. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of Sue Daly or Sew Line Glue. 
and you just place your fabric right side up on the wrong side. Just make sure it covers it. Now what I'm gonna do is between the lines one and two, I'm gonna fold that over and trim. And I'm gonna do that on the other side. So now working on the opposite side, you're gonna put these triangles right sides together, right there. And you're just gonna kinda of make sure it's centered. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm gonna put pins in place just to keep it in place. And I'm gonna do both sides. So you've got your fabrics right sides together on one side and you have where you're gonna sew on the second side. Now we're gonna sew between lines one and two. And I'm gonna start a little bit before the line and I'm gonna go all the way across and I'm actually gonna go all the way off the paper. I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna sew the same thing. I'm gonna lower my stitch length about half an inch, so maybe use a 1.5 stitch length and stitch on this paper. It's also great if you use a size 90 needle when you're working with foundation paper. So what you're gonna do now is press toward the background. I'm not gonna use steam because I don't want my paper to shrink. So this is how it looks after we add the first triangles. Now what we're gonna do is add the step three and I'm gonna pull this paper back on that stitch line, crease it. And I'm using this add a quarter because what it does is it will stop right on the paper. If you don't have this ruler, all you have to do is trim a quarter inch away from this line. Okay, so now you're gonna put right sides together right on that line three. And on these, when I'm sewing, I do remove the pins as I go because it's gonna come out accurate and it won't matter as much as the previous steps. And then you just stitch directly on that line between one and three. And I just start a little bit before and end a little bit after. Press toward your background. So this is how the back looks and this is how the front looks. And what you're gonna do is we're gonna cut on the solid lines. So I'm gonna cut exactly on the solid lines. So for me, it's easiest just to cut on the four outside lines and you can see how accurate that is and then do these inside lines. And there are words where it says to trim. So I'll do that, do this. Okay, now this method is 100% accurate. It is the slowest because it is the most accurate and it does have waste to it. You're gonna have a lot of waste on the darker fabric. So you just remove this and this method, you make two at a time. So this is method three, let's move to method four. Our fourth method uses a specialty ruler called the Creative Grids Ultimate Flying Geese Tool. Now this one doesn't have a cheat sheet because it comes on the ruler. All your cut sizes are here. So for my two by four inch, I'm gonna cut a five and three quarter inch fabric once and four three and a quarter inch squares. Then I'm going to look and my instructions for what I'm showing you are right on the inside. So for your larger square, you're going to cut on the diagonal twice and each of these you're going to cut on the diagonal once. Now these are going to be trimmed down later so you can cut like this where you stack them. So what you're going to do now, I'm going to show you one. You actually make four with this method, but I'm gonna show you one. And what you'll do is you'll place your fabric where the corner, the bottom right corner matches and the bottom matches, and you have a tail at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and pin. 
Now here, I'm gonna switch to a quarter inch foot and stitch with a quarter inch seam. Now from here, you'll set your seam, press toward the background. Now here you wanna cut this little tip off and I like to just cut it off with a rotary cutter. And then to make the next one, you're gonna place where the bottom is lined up and the top has a little bit of room. So you're really just trying to line up this bottom rectangle and we're gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam. So from here, this math gives you an oversized flying geese unit. So you can see it's oversized. What we're gonna do is if you look at two by four, it says D. So I'm gonna line up D, which is right here on the ruler, and you're gonna line up the diagonal lines here, your point here, and your diagonal line here. And I'm gonna cut, this is our trim one, so you cut here and here. You're gonna rotate the ruler and your piece to trim two. And here's your two by four line. And you wanna make sure your point is here and your point is here. And this is how you use the Creative Grids Ultimate Flying Geese tool. This will give you 100% accurate flying geese. It's a little bit slow because you have to start and stop a lot, but there is very little waste on this method. Now we've done method four, let's move to our final method. So this last method is called the easy flying geese method, but I'm gonna call it the Eleanor Burns method because I learned this from her about 22 years ago and I love this method. So for the two by four inch finished geese, I'm gonna be using the large flying geese ruler. The ruler comes with complete instructions. Now our cheat sheet has um, different sizes than hers because what I like to do when I make hers, whatever size her ruler says, I add half an inch. And that is the math that's over here because I've had the best results with this. But this is my favorite method. I use it every time I make flying geese. I do one little thing different than her instructions. So I'm gonna show you that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm making two by four. So I have made my white fabric seven and a half inches square and my dark fabric six inches so my tip to you is right here the corner squares that is the one that you want to be your bigger fabric so whatever goes right here needs to be your bigger square so the first thing i do is i put my fabrics right sides together and i do this slightly different than her instructions so in her instructions she has you draw a line here I'm gonna show you hers and my method. So you wanna center this so that it's the same distance here and here. And she has you draw a line here. Then she has you draw a line a quarter inch away on both sides. So what I have found over the years is instead of drawing lines, I just put my fabrics together, cut on the center, and then I just use a quarter inch seam. I don't have to draw any lines. Now I am going to put some pins and my fabrics are right sides together. And you're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. So I noticed when I cut, this is a little bit fatter than this and that's okay. That's why I had you cut half inch bigger because I could never get it to work with her method because I never lay it exactly straight. So you should be okay with this because we cut bigger. Now from here, you wanna to press toward your larger triangle. So now you have two units that look like this. What you wanna do is you wanna put them, flip this one. You wanna make sure your lines are going the same direction and a blue touches a white and a white touches a blue. And here, she does the same thing where you draw the three lines. Instead, to save time, just gonna line mine up, cut, keep these pinned and sew with a quarter inch seam down both lines. A 
Okay, so when you look at this, you're getting two flying geese from here and two flying geese from here. I want to press towards the white here and here. So in between here, cut a little slit and you can cut to the seam because you're going to cut that off. So in between here, cut a little slit. Set your seam, press to the white on the right side, flip it over and press to white there and then press this flat. And this is gonna get cut out so that little bump, you won't see it. So then I'm gonna take my flying geese ruler and it says two by four. And what I like to do is first cut across the top to move that out of the way. And you follow the lines on her ruler. Now this is always accurate. This is the fastest method and it uses the least amount of waste, except that when you add the half inch for my math, it adds a tiny bit of waste, but it saves time when you're sewing because you don't have to line everything up perfectly. And this makes four flying geese at one time. So this is the Easy Flying Geese Eleanor Burns method and you make four at a time and I love this method. Now we use the large flying geese ruler. She also has a small flying geese ruler and the large geese makes four by eight inch flying geese and two by four flying geese. The small makes one and a half by three and three by six or she also has a calling all geese ruler that you can use the same math and trim down. Now I'm gonna be honest and tell you I've never tried this ruler because I love the others so much. So today I showed you how to make flying geese five ways. The traditional method, fast flying geese, it's so in my foundation paper, creative grids, ultimate flying geese tool, and the Eleanor Burns method. I would love you to try all five of these methods. Comment below and let me know which is your favorite and make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.